In band OEM for IPv6, trip recording and service path verification for all traffic. If we look at our DNA today as a network engineer, we are very similar to a medical doctor. If we diagnose a network, we typically look at the network and try to derive the network state from just observing it at a given point in time. And we're using a couple of tools to probe the network in order to understand the network a little better. But if we look at what medical doctors do today, is they tend to continuously diagnose the patient. They give you a heart rate monitor. And even more so, I think if we look at the insurance systems today, they even look at giving you benefits if you do carry a smart bracelet and monitor yourself all the time so that they can diagnose yourself a little bit better in case there is issues. And taking one step further, what is there to diagnose yourself? In certain cases, well, they give you an ankle monitor and then a feature that was there to just diagnose becomes even more so a compliance feature. And we can gather the very same approach as we move into the networking world, right? Because from a compliance perspective, have you ever thought and asking yourself, if we do traffic engineering, service chaining, policy-based routing, all these traffic steering mechanisms, have you ever ask yourself, does the traffic really follow the way that it's supposed to? Is it really following the suggested path? And even more so, has your management ever asked yourself that? This is something that in the physical world, yeah, may you may be able to prove with cabling. But as we move into the virtual world, how do you do this as if all the traffic is virtual, if the traffic just travels through virtual switches, there's no longer a way to go and verify the cabling. So uh, back around about a year to Shweta and I, a financial customer portrayed the problem and said, well, guys, we can't really move to network function virtualization unless we really prove within every single packet that the tra traffic goes through this sequence of firewalls that we're interested in. Just more recently, um, Peter Willis, the chief researcher of BT, put that out at a SDN World Conference, where he said, well, how do we really make sure that in the virtual world the ports are really connected in the right way and that there is no bugs? Because if something goes wrong, my job is on the line. Now, how do we approach and solve that problem? We have to solve it on a per packet basis because there is no f way to go and prove that every traffic and every single packet is making it the right way unless you prove it within every single packet, right? So what we decide to do is we add metadata to every single packet that allows us to prove and verify whether a packet has been through the sequence of hops that you steered the traffic to. And the approach that we're doing is we're taking a secret, we're splitting the secret into multiple portions, and we're giving every single portion of that secret to an individual node. And now as a packet traverses through the network, we'll pick up these pieces of the secret and that at the very end, we're either able to reassemble the secret and then verify that way that the packet went the right way, or if we look at the lower red path, we'll find out that there is a piece missing in the reassembly function, and hence, well, the packet went the wrong path. Here I only gather the red and the green portion, and I'm missing the blue portion, so it doesn't really work. Now, in the digital world, we can't really color the packets, right? What we have to do is get a little smarter at that. And getting a little smarter is leveraging what is called in the industry Shamir's secret sharing scheme. So the secret that we carry now is a polynomial. And if we go back to school math, you remember something from school math that is very simple. You know that a polynomial of degree n is defined by n plus 1 points. So polynomial of degree 1, a line, is 2 points. Polynomial of degree 2, parabola, 3 points. Cubic function, 4 points, and so forth. In our little example here, we take a parabola, and the parabola is uniquely defined by 3 points. Now, splitting the secret, which is the polynomial, we use 3 points on this graph, 
and just dedicate a point each to every single service hop that we want to go verify. And now if we collect that information, these three points, they are totally sufficient using Lagrange interpolation to re-retrieve the original polynomial. Just an easy and beautiful concept. We're doing all operations modular a prime number in order to protect against um, differential analysis, so there's a couple of additional tricks that we do. If we would go with this schema, just plain vanilla, we would also find that it's very hard to go and operationalize this problem because every single packet needs a different polynomial. So rather than going with a packet per polynomial, we do something smarter. We're using two polynomials. We're using one polynomial, which is a secret, and we keep that constant. And we take a second polynomial, and we make that public and random and per packet. And now if we're using the math and the logic that we just discuss discussed on top of these two polynomials, then we have something that is both public, easily manageable, and per packet, and we have a secret. And given that the sum of something that is secret and public is again a secret, we solved our problem. And the underlying math, we don't really have time to, you to go and portray the underlying math to you here, but trust me, we can do this entire thing with only three additions and one single multiplication prop. No advanced mathematics, very simple to do and very fast. Hence, we've chosen for that schema. Transporting the metadata requires us to only transport typically 128 bit in the packet. And we need that for two numbers. One is to identify the second polynomial, which is the piece that we call the random number here, and a second piece that cumulatively calculates the final verification value. And both of which are 64 bits. That's sufficient to operate at 100 gig for roughly 3,100 years, which is awesome. Now, we just carry, need to go carry these two values. And where can we carry them? We can either carry them in a policy element in segment routing or an NSH where we have type 2 metadata, or we can use an IPv6 extension header to carry that metadata. And, well, if we would use an IPv6 extension header to carry metadata, there might be other things that we can do with an extension header to carry metadata, and that enters our in-band OEM subject. In-band OEM is not really new. We carry in-band information in IP for quite some time, at least on paper. For 35 years, we have the route recording option specified, and guess what? For 35 years, we don't use it, mainly for operational purposes, mainly because people, day one, considered it's too heavyweight from a compute perspective. But these days, things have changed. If you look at the P4 spec, in-band OEM is in there. So let's go try. If we had in-band OEM, what could we do? We could do path tracing for ECMP. We could diagnose all paths in the network as opposed to only one. Service path verification, we've just seen that. We can derive the IPv6 traffic matrix. We can do trend analysis on delay, jitter, loss in the network. And we could even put in crazy information like the GPS geolocation if we have a mobile network of mobile routers. So what kind of metadata would we need to carry? Node ID, ingress interface, egress interface for ECMP use cases, proof of transit information like the cumulative and random numbers that we've just seen, sequence numbers, timestamps, and maybe even a field that is completely custom. So for ECMP, well, you all remember, how do you debug ECMP networks uh, today? Really, really hard. Typically, you shut down all the links but one to force the ping and trace down a particular path. Now, if we can monitor all the paths, like we do in a little demo application that we can also show you on dcloud.cisco.com, well, you can monitor all the paths and the hard problem is gone and you no longer need to affect your traffic to debug ECMP. Another crazy example. So if you embed GPS geolocation into the packet, you can suddenly visualize from where packets were sent. And this little thing here is a simulation of a router or a bunch of routers driving around Bangalore campus. And we can really see the amount of delay, the amount of packet loss that we see between any two routers as they communicate. In-band OEM, what does that really mean? We gather information as we traverse through the network. And we typically do this within a domain only. So we're not going to go be crazy and do that on the internet. 
And gathering that information we do in a new header and we're using a hop by hop extension header to do that. So you can either do plain vanilla, only the extension header, or you do double encapsulation if you're a little bit more concerned about containing your inbound OEM domain. And what do we do? We gather this stuff that we talked about, ingress, egress interface, node ID, all this information hop by hop, and then we export it using flexible NetFlow or IPFix. And we do this in the fast path of the router, so performance is not a really concern. So let's look at an example. We get the, 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 uh, the tracing information in. At the first top, we just impose an array that is big enough to cater for the entire domain. And, well, we impose all the data or fields that we want to go and record here. It's just service chaining verification and it's path tracing information. And at the first hop, we record outgoing interface and the node ID. Second hop, again, node ID, outgoing interface, which is C and 4 here. And final hop, B and 6, outgoing interface. And now the verifier has all that information available, and he can go and export it. And typically, we export using IPFix, flexible NetFlow, or we export directly into an information bus like Kafka. Well, typical concern is, does it perform? Yes, it does. It does perform, and we've done a trial implementation on a plain vanilla ISRG2 router, and you'll see that, well, inbound OEM is no better or no worse than any type of GRE or any type of other tunnel encapsulation. Yeah, there is an effort to put the header on and remove it, but apart from that, there's hardly anything. So putting the header on, removing it, and you'll even see that our implementation is even was a little better than GRE encapsulation. What well, just means that GRE encapsulation sucks a little. But we can do that with proper performance. Now, let's look at the little bit of a bitter, bigger picture. You can use the individual tools of inband OEM to portray things and use the individual detection mechanisms to feed that data into a bigger ecosystem and use that data in the bigger ecosystem. And now let's assume a cloud here and just say, well, host one to host two, somebody starts to moan, oh, I can't ping this other side any proper anymore. Something's wrong. So if we had inbound OEM, the nebulous cloud would just disappear and we'll start to find out that initially the traffic was traveling via uh, host one, A, B, C, and then host two. So we've seen the initial delay being relatively small across these links. And then after a while at T0, we switch over from the earlier upper path to the lower path. And what happens here is, whew, we not only see delay building up on that particular link, but we also see drops ki uh, kicking in. And that means, well, if we're a network engineer, we know exactly that the link between A and Z or node Z had a problem and that this node start to drop uh, packets, and we'll see these packet drops later on. So the diagnosis is great. We switch from one path to another path, we have full visibility into this, and either the link has a problem or the node has a problem. And guess what? If we now had anomaly detection on the individual nodes, we can fire up an alert to our orchestration ecosystem and say, well, there's something going wrong and you might want to go do something about Node Z. Maybe you want to go scale out, uh, scale out that version uh, if it's a, it's a virtual network function. We can't only talk about this in concept, we can also do this on paper live and in color, right? So if we look at a demo setup, you see very much the same behavior if we export the timestamp information, the delay information into a ecosystem like with Kibana shown here as a dashboard, where you see the delays on the upper links, then the switchover happening, and then, well, on the lower links, well, the ACES scale is not far enough to resolve the little green bars out of here, but you really see the delay ramping up, so you're filling the buffer, and then suddenly you pa see packet drops. So the concept can be translated into reality if you look at it into a, a bigger ecosystem. So if we look at the bigger ecosystem, we have our inbound OEM domain, and the inbound OEM domain can have something like a semantic reasoner, which does anomaly detection right on the box so that we can strain the amount of data that we really have to export. And we can export that data into NetFlow collectors or an information bush like Kafka, 
and then we can visualize that information or even use that information to drive additional change via a controller into our network again. So just consider you do service chain verification, you detect a failure, and after that, do you detecting a failure, you automatically switch on path tracing for that particular failure so that you're able to diagnose why service chain verification failed. So that you give the operator an immediate knowledge of why things go wrong as opposed to they only go wrong. So in a nutshell, we have running code and we have running code in a variety of platforms today. We have running code in OpenVPP and it's in the process of being completely open source. There's traces in FDIO or FIDO already. We have running code in iOS, T-Train, and we have running code in iOS V and Varo. And the later one you can view live if you go to dcloud.cisco.com where you can look at a real world uh, environment to go and try it yourself. And we've also done data plane studies like on Doppler A6 where we are proving that we can do the overall thing in a single cycle. So in-band OEM can be done with performance which is a key message. We are not really hampering the network environment just by adding additional metadata to the packets. Thank you so much.